between Olympic Games can feel like an eternity. Let's go, come on. But stretch that to five, and lives can change forever. Okay. Impossible to predict, and sometimes heartbreaking to witness. I'm scared. I don't want to push it. Groß, denn heute wird womöglich der letzte Zeuge im Fall Wolf gehört, zumindest wenn es nach dem Richter geht. Ein Ermittler des Landeskriminalamtes, der die Ermittlungen geleitet hat. On competition days, I always feel nervous. There's always been this pit in my stomach. I'm 24 and I've been doing gymnastics since I was about six or seven, so you'd think I'd get over it by now. We all tell ourselves to just treat it like practice, but we know deep down it never really feels that way. I think we've all sacrificed so much, worked so hard just to get to this point. We don't want to let our teammates down. Our dream of going to the Olympics all comes down to this one single day. During our first few days in Germany, we felt really excited to be there and to be a part of the World Championships. Help, help, help. <laughs> also a little bit nervous. Yeah. Blocking out all our fears about Friday hasn't been easy. That's when we'll try and qualify for the Olympics. <laughs> so we're probably going to compete at other events at Worlds, but qualification day is the most important for us. But did she have two beds? It's our only chance to send a full team to the Tokyo Olympics. Pretty surreal to be at another world. Oh, I'm excited, yeah. I want to get it started. I know. A couple more days. training is when we get a chance to test out the competition arena and equipment. It's kind of like a run through of the, the competition and we only have one chance to do that. I think for some of the younger ones on the team, it can be really hard to be tossed into this big arena, have to go out there and try and do your best gymnastics. exactly what you need to hear even if it's just one word and it just like triggers something in your mind and you're like wow I can really do this Ellie is not just a, a, a mascot or something to, to bring along because of her experience she's a ter terrific gymnast I do think that that kind of experience is invaluable especially when you are trying to build a program and, and kind of set a culture so for our team to qualify for the Olympics, we need to be in the top 12 teams on Friday. Many people think that it's easy for us to qualify because we qualified for it at the last Worlds, but if we make too many mistakes, well, we might just not qualify. It is a little intimidating to see those athletes who are a little bit better than you. The biggest threat probably for us is Team USA, Russia, and China. If we're wanting to beat them this year, we're going to have to really put on our big pants and, you know, just go all out. US is at the top right now, and they're unbeatable. And I think it's because they have so much depth of gymnasts. We have maybe one or two backups, but we don't have maybe 10 like the US have. podium training and becomes a little bit more stressful because you're wanting to hit everything perfectly. And sometimes it will go great and sometimes we have podium trainings where it doesn't necessarily go as you plan. It was okay. It wasn't the world's best practice. I don't know. I felt it was kind of good. It was time to get things out. Sometimes things go too smoothly for too long. 
Yeah, overall, podium was was fine. One, two, three. It was maybe 80, 85%, but there's still some things to work on before we compete for real. You know, just feeling the atmosphere in the gym, seeing the arena, I think it's going to be a really exciting competition. So we're continuing to build until Friday, and we can't wait to get out there. <laughs> just wanted to run through the schedule for tomorrow and just get your general thoughts on how everything's been going so far and what everyone needs for tomorrow. Shelly had a bit of a, of a knee pain today, so we'll take her. Yeah. Uh, it's good to have a few little setbacks, you know, before the competition. It keeps the kids mentally more aware. You know, it, it can be emotional, especially close to the competition, uh, but we've done really good work. So you find out if we're qualified for the Olympics or not? So we just need to kind of take a step back, take a deep breath, and know and focus that we can do it. It's always in the back of your head that, you know, 24 hours from now, we're going to know whether we go to the Olympics or not. But first, we've got to get through those 24 hours. and in life, you have to dream big. So when we look at those top countries in the world, sometimes it does seem a little impossible, but it isn't. You know, I think you have to have that confidence and that belief that you can be just as good or better than those top athletes. We're one of the last teams to compete on the first of two days of qualification. But we crunch the numbers and know if we're third or higher tonight, we're all but assured of going to the Olympics. So we just knew that we had to kind of hit those three routines. We were hoping for around a 41.2 score on the uneven bars, and we ended up with a 41.9, so we knew that that had been a successful event, and we were in a good place moving forward. Beam is always an unknown event. It's a nerve-wracking event. It is hard because you never know with the nerves. It's okay, it's okay. I always kind of get upset and mad, but that almost makes the rest of my routine better. Okay, a little under our projection, but that's okay. Scores on beam weren't as high as what we were hoping for, but it was enough for us to move forward and still work towards being in that top three. main events and that's one of my kind of biggest jobs on the team. I had a little bit of a mistake on my last line on my routine. I kind of tucked around my last tumbling pass because I didn't want to land on my bum. I wanted to land on my feet. Yeah, I was going to be upset with that. I was a bit disappointed in myself, not the performance that I was hoping for. And it's higher than what they said, all of the marks. So we're higher than that, so we're good. We're still on target for right. 165. So we've had a pretty good competition thus far, and heading into vault, it's not guaranteed that we are going to be in this top three. So we needed to have a strong vault rotation. We definitely didn't beat France, but we 
We just knew we had to stay on our feet. and then seeing Canada in those top three. We were really proud of what we were able to go out and accomplish, even with a couple of mistakes. It's like a dream come true. And the fact that it actually is becoming a reality. I have like no words, like it's just so awesome. It was a really, really special moment that I'll remember forever. Qualifying our team for the Olympics means the world to me. That is the most important. More than any individual medal I might win later in the competition. And, uh, without further ado, I think let's open it up for questions. Simone, so I'm sure you have a strategy as to when you're going to do a triple double and a double double on beam. You know, I have my ups and downs in trainings too. I'm not perfect. Simone is incredible. She is the top of the world in, in gymnastics. How different is it being Simone Biles 2019 that was six years ago? At the end of the day, I'm still a human being before I'm Simone Biles a superstar. I think Simone has a good respect for me. We've been through a lot of co competitions and experiences together. So I think that's something that's kind of built our relationship over the years. Simone and I were in the all-around finals together, and so was my teammate, Brooklyn. Two years ago, this gymnast took a silver medal in the all-around competition in her home championships in Montreal. Being the first Canadian to win a medal in the all-around competition, that was just one of the most incredible moments, I think, for Canadian gymnastics and showing that we can be in the top three in the world. I knew if things went right in Stuttgart, I could be on that podium again. Superb work from Ali Black. What a competitor she is. Ali Black has scored 41133 on the bars. Made it look easy. Let's see what the judges make of that routine. So Ellie Black on floor. Currently in fifth place. Two and a half to his walker into double pipe. Incredibly difficult. And I think we're going to have a dramatic close to this competition. This is going to be a final rotation to dream of. I was quite nervous going through the all around competition. And especially after you've got three events down that were really good and then heading into your final rotation. My coach and I knew that we had to try the harder scoring vault to really end up having a chance of, of finishing on podium. She looks like she's struggling there. Oh dear. She landed just a little bit short, didn't she? And it's Ellie Black of Canada. Very, very close indeed, Ellie Black, in fourth position by only just under a couple of tenths. That's a really great display from the Canadian to get very close. The moment after I landed my vault, all I could really think about was what I had done to my ankle. And going into an Olympic year, I think that was what was stress stressing me out the most. Simone, of course, won, and it was the 19th world title of her career. Now it's back to Halifax to see how badly my ankle's been injured and what the plan and recovery was gonna look like moving forward. I felt the clock ticking. The Tokyo games are less than nine months away.
from Stuttgart. I had surgery about a week and a half later to repair one of the ligaments in my ankle. I've had a lot of injuries over my career. I've had four surgeries, so this is my, probably the second biggest surgery. Sometimes there are those worries that, you know, it may not go exactly as you plan. So I just try and be as positive as I can and, and focus on just what I can control right now. Friday, you can start putting a little more weight on it. Yeah, this is your job, right? Yeah. It's gonna take a little bit of time for her recovery to come back. A few months, because we don't wanna go too quickly and push too hard and not give everything time to heal. I'm scared, that's yeah. why. I'm like, I don't want to push it. Like, I don't want to bend it too much. The scary part is over. You have to accept those feelings of frustration and sadness and anger um, because you need to be able to accept those to move forward, I think. Do you want to try holding yourself, pushing out, and then coming back? You know, you want to believe that it's gonna come back as strong as possible. And if you don't believe that, it's really hard for your body to heal that way. Wow. Can you see how you're not, Yeah, you're not even going past nine. Yeah. Our plan is to be ready for nationals, which is one of the, the big events for deciding the team for the Olympics. And our plan is she's gonna be ready. So there's no reason why she won't be ready to qualify for the Olympics. She can walk. I can walk. You just have to trust in the process, put in the work, and, you know, I think I'll be back for, for Tokyo. If you get up and over, then you can get to that position and snap and get your feet. So for Ellie to be back so fast is so good for the team and for Canada because we need her. She's our team leader and if we don't have her, our team kind of is missing something. Okay, Ellie Black, Jaeger, Pike. Yeah. Yay, I didn't die. <laughs> it's been great to reconnect with my teammates, see how well they've been doing, how everyone's been improving, and it's motivating me to get back even stronger. There's seven different ways to qualify athletes or countries to the Olympics. I think sometimes when you look at only four kids going to the Olympics, it kills me. I wish they could all go to the Olympics because they, they've all worked that hard. At nationals or just after nationals, the team will be named and then the team and alternates and coaches and everybody will go to Japan to adjust to the time change. And then the Olympics are the 19th of July to the 10th of August. Sometimes it's luck of the draw. You have to hope you don't get injured. And sometimes it goes your way and sometimes it doesn't. It's difficult being on a team and being so close and being a family and then also having to compete for spots. And in a family, yeah, there are gonna be some complications, some challenges sometimes, but you work through it and you support each other through it. I just don't have that mindset that they're really competitors. When I see them compete and they do well, then it just brings me joy. And if we're able to make the Olympic team together, I think that would just be a dream come true. Elite Canada is the very first competition of the year, and it's a big competition for anybody who's trying to make an Olympic team for Canada. All right, ladies, are we ready? a little bit nerve-wracking for them because it is early in the season. Come on, kid. Come on. What we're looking for is um, how in shape they are, how ready they are, how routine ready, if they have all of their difficulty. 
The challenge is that we try to keep them healthy all the way through Tokyo because that's where they ultimately want to peak. Oh, oh, so so oh. It's the first competition back after injury, so I'm not expecting myself to be perfect. My spot on the team isn't secure. Nobody's is. We have to keep everyone a part of this team fighting for those spots, and we want the strongest, healthiest people um, closest to the summer that we can have. I wasn't a talented gymnast. My sister, she was always the most talented one in the family. Everything came easy for her. Unlike me, where I had to work really hard to get where I am today. Beautiful. Big arm. Long arm. And 2016, I didn't make the team. My dream would be for both of us to be on the same Olympic team. Will it happen? I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> And I feel like it's her time, because like in 2016, she wasn't really on top of her game, but now like she's, she improved a lot. <laughs> so I'm aiming to try and qualify as an all-arounder, because I'm not strong enough on one single event to potentially have a chance of a final or a medal. <laughs> a little bit longer, but they're, they're in the works for sure. Um, we don't want to push the ankle too much too fast. I didn't go perfectly, but I'm just glad that I tried something new because I have been doing the same routines for a while now. It felt really good to be back. Back with Eden, back with the girls, back in the atmosphere of competition, really good. All the girls did really well this weekend and I'm feeling confident about my first step back from surgery. But the big test is just a month away. My first competition against a tough field of international gymnasts. I've come to Milwaukee to compete at the American Cup. Good start to the day. Wicked awesome, that's gonna be my new saying. I feel very excited to be back to my first competition, back on all four events. It's been about four months since I had my surgery and my ankle's at about 75, 80% back. Of a severe injury, two torn ligaments in her right ankle. That injury that she had, it was it was big time. You know, for me, I think in the whole competition, it's just to be safe and and not to to push myself too much at this point in the game. This behind Morgan Hurd after the two rotations. Ellie Black from Canada. I think it's normal when you have an injury that you, when you get back out into competition, um, you know, there are going to be some things that you're a little bit nervous about. Overall, I'm so excited with how today went. Some of the landings obviously are a little bit sore, but um, no, my ankle is feeling very good today and I think that was important to see that and gain confidence. Literally, like, great comeback. Like, that's crazy. You literally just had an ankle injury and you're already, like, back to full competition. And I just, like, gave all the props to her. I think we're good. Now 
it's back home. Keep training hard, get my ankle stronger, and get ready for the selection trials three months from now. It's just a matter of time before the coronavirus begins spreading. News coming into CBC News. The coronavirus outbreak is accelerating. Close to tourist planning. The worst. Absolutely. Alarming levels of infection. Markets tanked again. Coronavirus. This is Spanish entire season. The coronavirus is officially a pandemic. Pandemic. It's a really, really tough moment to go through, I think. You know, just just accepting the news. Just heard from Team Canada, they will not be sending athletes to the Summer Games in Tokyo. It was something we've been working towards for so many years, that just being taken away, you know, that's, that's something that really hurts. I think I was in a very different situation to my teammates because I have been to the Olympics before. For a lot of these girls, like Anna and Brooklyn, you know, this was, this was their shot to go to the Olympics. Canada, the first country to say, we're not going. When I heard the news, I was pretty shaken and disappointed to see that all the hard work that I've been putting all these years is just gonna be gone. <laughs> it was really, really heartbreaking. I, I like tried to keep it together. And then like five minutes later, like I broke down in tears. The recently postponed 2020 Olympic Games have a new starting date. 23rd of uh, July to the 8th of August. I think hearing that there were going to be an Olympics um, definitely brought some happiness. But it's a year is a long time and, and you never know what's going to happen in a year. I think hearing the news, personally, there were some emotions that kind of felt like, okay, maybe this is a positive thing, maybe I have extra time to get stronger, heal from my injury, and trying to be better than I would have in the summer of 2020 um, for my team and, and for Canada. Adapting to home training was not easy. I think it was a lot of figuring out how much we should be doing and, and how much is too much. I know on social media there were a lot of challenges going around on Instagram, people nominating other people to try handstand challenges and, and all of these crazy things. Oh, I miss you guys. Oh, you guys too. When were we supposed to start competing? Like next week? Yesterday would have been the start of the Olympics, I guess. And then okay. opening ceremonies would have been today. I know, I would have celebrated my birthday there. Yeah, it's just crazy to think it's like, okay, now we've got 364 days to go. Right. Round two. <laughs> Round two. Hi, honey. Let's go. Good job. Huh? Maladie. Rotation. Rotation. Yes. Wow. I'm thinking maybe it's the bar. <laughs> Everybody knows that Anna is training here in Oshawa, but not a lot of people know that Ava Stewart is training here as well. She's doing really well this year. She was at Elite Canada second right after Ali Black. I was planning to go to the 2024 Olympics because I wasn't supposed to be old enough until then but now I have the chance to possibly go to this one and I'm gonna try to go to it. For some of them, it's devastating that Olympics was canceled. At this age, they, you know, they change and their body change and their mind changing. So for Ava, it was actually a positive thing because all of a sudden, Ava was age eligible. I'm surprised I stayed on the beam on that one. I want to show Gymnastics Canada that I obviously really, really want to go and that I deserve a chance. Come on, Ava, you got it. Up. I, I am going to work hard on trying to fix my routines, make them more consistent, make them cleaner. And I'm gonna try to work on pressure and nerves that I know a lot, a lot, it gets to a lot of girls. Do you think she's ready? I 
think she's getting there. I'm like, you know what? Why not? So I think she has a chance, in my opinion. Towards the end of the first lockdown, Gymnastics Canada reached out to me and they're like, I think now's a good time to heal up your ankle and get the surgery you've been wanting to get for a while now. But it's been months since the surgery and my ankle hasn't responded as I would like it to. I was getting a lot of the nerve pain around the scar area and kind of coming up, but I guess since nerves are all connected, it's now kind of going into the inner part of my ankle. So the unpredictable Unpredictability is a little bit frustrating and annoying. My ankle had basically been a mess for about three years. I had to just listen to my body and, it, and my gut and everything was just telling me that you need rest. So I've decided to withdraw from Olympic consideration as I'm taking this time in this year to just heal up my ankle and prepare for what's next in the future. It was a very hard decision to come to terms with. Just because I don't make it this year, um, it doesn't mean I can't make it in three more years. And even if this is the end of my journey, then I will be happy with everything that I've accomplished so far. During the off-season, I compete for Canada, and during season, I compete for the University of Alabama. She's a member of the Canadian national team. And she just happens to be doing the most difficult vault in the competition. And that is the best double twist she has done yet. Not too many NCAA gymnasts compete internationally at the same time. Gymnastics, you're expected to perform much more difficult skills and it can be super stressful. It's really two different worlds. College gymnastics is a lot more upbeat and fun, and you can just be yourself. I got back to Canada about a month ago after my two-week quarantine that left me a week and a half to prepare for Canadian Championships. My specialty is vault. In 2018 at the World Championships in Doha, I got a silver medal on vault. And at the Olympics, I qualified to the vault final and I finished eighth. Obviously, I have higher goals this year. I want to win a medal on vault at the Tokyo Olympics. I think the most important thing for me to accomplish at Canadians is to clean up my execution. That will give me higher scores and give me a better chance of making the team. I'm confident that I can make this Olympic team because of hard work that I've put in and all the hours. I just know that it's going to pay off. seven months I haven't been able to to do any actual gymnastics or very limited conditioning. Turns out that I have a few herniated discs in my back and a pretty major one in my low back. So how long did it take before you were able to then go back to tumble and everything? Yeah, at my worst point I couldn't move my my feet without having any pain in my back so it was a pretty rough time and it was pretty scary just not knowing if I was able to come back from that. Seven months later, I just started training again. 
I just got some of my skills back. I'm working back to routine. I'm just worried about my injuries holding me back right now. I, I'm trying to stay as hopeful as I can to stay healthy and be in shape and, and peak time for the Olympics. It's a pretty big step for me. <laughs> I haven't tumbled in a long time, so. It is stressful for sure, but I'm, I think I have confidence <laughs> in myself that I can do it. Can you just let me know who you want to talk to, David? Our head coach, David Kikuchi, right now is isolated in Halifax. We have him participating on Zoom, so I carry him around on an iPad and on my phone where he gets to interact with the girls, see all the routines, and give them feedback and talk to the coaches. We held out hope for a really long time that we'd be able to get the girls together uh, for Canadian Championships in person, uh, but sadly with the provincial restrictions that uh, are still in place across Canada, we have to do Canadian Championships virtually. Those take place next week, so the girls have two days of competition, and those two days are their final opportunity to hit those target scores and to demonstrate uh, their performances to be selected on the Olympic team. You found a way to control us yeah. because you are an expert at landings I right know, now. I know. It's really tough because the team is only four people and you know these girls have worked so hard and everyone is so so deserving. You know I think it's always anxious no matter whether you're you know at the top of the leaderboard or, or lower down. Um, you know we're all fighting for those spots and we all no matter what level you're at, you know, we all need to, to prove and show that we have made that team. And, um, you know, I, I think the same goes for me. There's, there's no guarantees. Championships is important because it kind of doubles as the Olympic trials this year. These girls have worked so hard, and unfortunately, we only do have four spots. You know, at the end of the day, I wish we could all be there together. No matter what happens, we're still a family. Ellie Black, Canadian Championships, day two. So, two zero and one in connection for 5.1. Bolt number two. Obviously, it's very nerve wracking. Let's go, Sean. I'm just very excited for their decision, and hopefully, I make it. So, fingers crossed. Canadian Championships, day one. Ava Stewart, uneven bars. Come on, Ava. I think my chances of getting the Olympic spot is better than I thought it would be. <laughs> Since I'm pretty much coming in second at most of my competitions. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I feel like that's a good sign, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> it's not the performance that I wanted to show. I feel like I'm fighting for the fourth place right now. Next. My routine's not very constant at the moment, and I think it showed in my performances. The average is 2.6 for 12.1 final score. I come to peace with my thoughts of not making the Olympics. I don't know how the other girls are doing until all the scores come out. I'm just hoping for the best right now and how, however it goes, you know, <laughs> we'll see. Okay, everybody ready? Let's go through the different uh, categories of priority Selection the selection working group to determine the highest probability of an individual. For the first time medal. ever, we are going for a medal. Ali and Shallon have made finals at World Championships in the past two years, as has Brooklyn. Maybe like if you took her best stuff, she's maybe 80 or 90. If she's able to maintain this upward trend, then she may be the best bet. We've got two different combinations. Uh, teams uh, that didn't so meet the standard. if everyone's comfortable, uh, I'm hearing that it's pretty unanimous. The decision is made. So just want to thank you guys. I know it's not an easy task. Thank you for taking on the job. We're super good now. 
more like promise. The Zoom promise. So it should be good to go. All right, so um, Ellie, the purpose of this meeting is to um, let you know that the selection and working group met this morning. You, you obviously have been selected uh, to be part of the Canadian team in Tokyo. Wow. Thank wow. you. Yeah, it's so exciting. <laughs> I know it was sort of expected, Ellie, but I think it's something to actually accomplish it. Yeah, it's kind of surreal in that sense of like over everything in the past year that we've been through that we're finally coming to that home stretch and yeah, very proud and grateful for the opportunity to represent Canada at a third Olympic Games. That's so exciting. So thank you, Shallon and Darina, for joining us today. And yeah, Shallon, we're super pleased to announce that you've been nominated to the Canadian Olympic gymnastic Woo! team. So congratulations. <laughs> It's been a extremely challenging year, Shallon, and especially for you to do this all wall at NCAA. That's incredible. You'll be a two-time Olympian, Shallon. Are you going to add 2021 to your tattoo, Shallon? <laughs> yeah. That's honestly a such a relief because all that weight was kind of lifted off my shoulders. I think we have a really good shot of doing amazing at this year's Olympics. First of all, Eva and Elena, uh, big congratulations for Nationals, like an amazing result, second all around in your first ever senior Nationals, and congratulations for making the Olympic team. Well, hold on a second, I'll go. Ellie's here at the gym with me. Hi, Eva! Congratulations! <laughs> I want to get back to training, but I'm happy. <laughs> She's ready to go. She's excited. Honestly, I did not know this was going to happen at the beginning of the year. I got like a whole, I, I, I started shaking. I was, I, I smiled. I was just, I couldn't stop smiling. In fact, I'm still smiling. <laughs> I'm pretty nervous right now. <laughs> I mean, it could go either way, and you know, I'm like shaking for the past few days. The committee met this afternoon, and it was a really close decision uh, for the team. And some people, some people had met some targets. Unfortunately, you didn't quite get there. But by the end, you had done just enough to make it onto the team. Congratulations. Big, big, big congratulations for that. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. <laughs> Happy to be delivering good news. Good for you. Well, then go hug your dad for a second and come back. Go hug. <laughs> I made the team. Oh, my God. <laughs> I wasn't really sure this year. Like, I really couldn't move my foot, like, a few months ago. <laughs> Which is the fact that I was able to kind of get this together. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just so grateful for everyone around me. Good morning. <laughs> okay. Rose, unfortunately, uh, the numbers didn't go quite in your favor. One combination had you ahead by a tiny bit. The other combination had Brooklyn ahead by more. Uh, so that Brooklyn was the choice for the, the final team spot. Rose was selected for the traveling alternate position. Vic, you're going to be named one of the non-traveling alternates. I know it's hard right now, but I, I hope you are proud of yourself. And Vic, I hope you're proud of yourself as well because you really overcame a lot. I agree with their decision and yeah, it's for sure upsetting, um, but I'm incredibly proud of myself and what I did this year. I was expecting it, but like to hear it from them, it's kind of like it hurts for sure because you've worked so hard for it, but yeah. It's okay. Without further ado, here is the 2020 Canadian Olympic Artistic Team. 